it's time to go through the best possible teams you can make with the new heroes 200 leads we have limit breaker super saiyan for goku limit breaker super saiyan for vegeta as well as dio aka hearts i'm going to cover the best teams for all three of these guys in this video so the video might be a little longer than usual i am sorry about that however i didn't want to waste your time and record these videos separately and have you wait when i can literally do it in one video on top of that i will have timestamps in the description of this video as well so if you don't care about goku and vegeta you can skip straight to the hearts portion by clicking that timestamp and basically saving you a little bit more time as well also on top of that um if you want to access any of these Dokkan sites yourself, links will be in the description. I recently revamped my entire description to make it really easy for you to find whatever the heck you want on my channel. So hopefully that suits you. But let's hop into this video, starting off with the best teams you can make for Goku and Vegeta. Now, it's unfortunate because Goku and Vegeta have some really great linking partners. The only issue is that we're going to be focusing on their teams, basically running them as leader, uh, because you need a very specific category or two to maximize these characters, as well as, you know, a unit or two uh, to make these guys as good as they possibly can be, which definitely sucks, you know? it's that They're not really super restrictive, but they're definitely, you know, they're not going to be their strongest if you're not running you know their specific leader so that's what we're focusing on for this again videos specifically and their leader skill is pretty much the same honestly i think goku's might be slightly better but you're still dealing with basically the same cast of characters so the best team i'm talking about will be including all of these characters right here and this is what i made for the best team for goku and vegeta and then i'm going to explain to you the rotations and why i'm picking what i'm picking here so this is the best team for goku and this is the best team for vegeta now as you guys can clearly see even if you're using vegeta as your lead you still want goku on the team and if you're still running goku as your lead you still want vegeta on your team but as you guys can see the main other difference is obviously not only you know the, the friend leads here but the support goku and the support vegeta and you'll see why just or basically right now so the first main rotation you want to run is going to be goku and vegeta together they're sharing a lot of links it does not matter who you basically have you know as your lead you're going to want to run again one of uh your own lead your, your lead with the other character or your other lead with your other character if that makes sense so if you're running vegeta's lead run him with goku vice versa right this is the first main rotation that you want to run the second main rotation completely depends on who you're running as your leader so one rotation could be goku and goku the other one could be vegeta and vegeta right so if you're running vegeta as your lead you're going to have vegeta as your friend which means you're going to have an extra vegeta floating around which you can pair up with the xeno vegeta and then same thing with the goku now it's very important to keep in mind here that goku if you don't have a vegeta on rotation goku will not be giving his 40 percent support and if you don't have another goku on vegeta's rotation you will not be giving the entire you know cast of characters or allies the 40 percent attack which definitely sucks but it doesn't really matter when it comes to these rotations here because goku is giving not only himself but this goku as well 40 percent to attack and defense so you're swapping out defense plus 40 percent for two key and 40% to attack and defense. And same thing with the Vegeta rotation. Vegeta won't be giving all allies 40% attack, which doesn't really matter because this guy is doing that himself and also supporting this Vegeta as well, giving him 40% to attack and defense and two key. So both of these rotations are incredibly strong. And on top of that, Goku, sorry, this Vegeta and this Goku are greatly stacking attack and defense, so they're going to be defensive juggernauts in most of the content in the game, while being supported, not maybe not supported, but while having really solid linking partners in Goku, as well as Vegeta. So, I would say, again, main rotation number one is Goku and Vegeta, the Limit Breakers, and rotation number two, depending on obviously who you're running, is going to be the Zeno Goku, Super Saiyan Goku with Goku, or Zeno Super Saiyan Vegeta with the Vegeta. Now, the rest of these characters here just fall down to your uh, floating units, basically your 
slot three coming in and out of every rotation type of units one of them i do have as this gohan right here i think he's going to make an incredibly strong third slot unit he's not supporting directly but he has 200 percent defense 50 percent damage reduction which you are activating because we have more two or more giant eight power category allies on this team which also keep in mind that since i put this guy on the team i wanted to make sure that we had at least two of these right which again we already have so that's why i'm putting goku and goku on the same team or basically goku and vegeta on the same team but anyways so you have 50 percent damage reduction 200 percent defense and an extra 50 percent defense when he's performing a super attack and obviously that's not great in slot one that is a slot two or three ability you want him to attack first before he gets attacked which is going to allow him to not only you know raise his defense from here but also raise his defense from here so why he's going to be a very powerful slot three option another great option for a slot three is going to be this pan who by the way is still incredibly good uh pan is giving all allies three key and 40 percent to uh attack and defense for this main rotation as well as this main rotation which is going to provide a lot of cohesion for this team but pan is still good in her own right right the chance to crit is really really good and of course the high chance to dodge is also really good especially in that last slot especially when you factor her ability to get extra defense per dodge as she performs so this pan i wouldn't say she's on the cusp of her eza but she's going to make this team stick together like glue a lot better without her and uh, when she gets her easy the team is going to be obviously a lot more broken than it was before so you know i would say definitely run this pan if you haven't if you have her please run this pan and then last but not least a great option would be the supreme kai of time now it is a little unfortunate because she's she's slightly uh underwhelming but she's not really that bad at all because 120% attack and defense with easy stats, you know, not the craziest, but she is massively raising them on super. So what you want to do is give her full additionals. If you can proc two super attacks, you're going to be okay, especially when you consider the all allies three key and 40% to defense and crit chance. So if the if the enemy even survives for for them to attack her, she's gonna. I feel like she'll be okay giving a crit chance to goku and vegeta as well as this rotation is very 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 powerful if you ask me but she's also giving a or has a great chance of extra attack and extra defense and of course if she takes a hit she's going to be covering 12 percent hp as a slight insurance you know in case she doesn't you know additional super attack or whatever the case is so i feel like even though she isn't the greatest option of all time she's i think going to be good enough on this team to be able to make a difference and a positive difference at that so that is the team that i would recommend running for this current hero celebration when it comes to goku and vegeta you have your slot three options right here your floating options as well are basically and then you have your main rotation main rotation main rotation main rotation mix in with main main yeah main main and then main main so uh, hopefully that helps when it comes to the goku and vegeta side of things now let's move on to the dio side of things and i actually might as well just go ahead and delete all of this right here just so we can focus purely on what we have going on for the man dio and i will mention this right now uh when it comes to dio uh dio here i keep calling him dio he's super hard he's voiced by dio if you know jojo you know you if you know you know right but team building around this guy is very very difficult because just like other heroes units this guy like he is giving extra potent support as well as a pretty strong chance of stunning it's medium but still better than nothing if you have extreme class crossover so no matter what even though he links well with some other characters here like you maybe sell you you, you just like all you really need to do all you really want to do is run the crossover team so every character we have pulled up here is going to be on the crossover category just to make dio look as good as he possibly can and rotation wise or main rotation wise the options aren't necessarily that great however keep in mind that dio himself is still supporting with a tremendous three key and 50 percent to stats so even if these rotations i show you may not be that great 
you're still getting a massive support from Dio himself, which is, again, going to make these rotations a lot more effective than what it may look like at first glance. So the first main rotation that you might want to consider running is, of course, both Dio's, maybe having both Dio's on the same rotation. You are literally sharing a disgusting amount of powerful links, but specifically... Big Bad... What does Brainiacs do? Yeah, Brainiacs, Big Bad Bosses. That's which is already 40% to attack and defense. And Cold Judgment giving an extra 25%. That is 65% to defense. Oh, sorry. 75% to defense. If you can pull this rotation off. And giving Dio 75% to defense is no joke whatsoever. Um, especially when you consider that one of these guys is giving the other and himself an extra 50... This is a... What a... A disgustingly strong rotation. Of course, definitely weak to any physical boss, right? But, you know, I think that you definitely will still be able to make this work. Of course, if you maximize or at least level up the links for your characters, all right? Another rotation I will mention is maybe uh, Sealess as well as um, Hearts here. Now, they do share two, sorry, three really powerful links. Brainiacs. Big Bad Bosses and Cold Judgment, three of the biggest defensive links, which you definitely love to see. And Seal is here, is actually supporting Dio himself, uh, giving Time Travelers one key and 20% to defense, whereas Dio is supporting Sealess with that extra two, three key and 50% to defense. So this rotation is definitely cohesive, but unfortunately, it runs into the issue of, you know, one or, or basically a one typing rotation. Which can definitely be a little weak, but I mean, again, the, the entire team for for Dio here uh, is very limiting. Uh, you want to run crossover, and extreme class crossover isn't weak per se, but definitely get just on the limiting side of things. And then the other rotation you can possibly run is this rotation right here. You still have some de decent links being active, uh, Brainiacs and Cold Judgment, which are definitely some of the stronger defensive links. Uh, now, Cooler here, let me actually go ahead and pull up Cooler. Keep in mind that, again, even though these links are not the greatest, Dio is giving Cooler 3 key and 50% to attack and defense. And Cooler here is giving 2 key and 20% to attack. Sorry, 2 key and 40% attack and defense to Dio. So the support is going both ways. So, again, even though these links don't look that great, you have him supporting him and him supporting him. So, again, a very cohesive rotation nonetheless. And this cooler is actually really, really good after the ZA. So, you just absolutely love to see it. Okay. So, those are the main rotations, I would say, that are going to be the best for, I mean, yeah, best for this Dio card. You have Dio and Dio, Dio and Sealess, and maybe even Dio and a Cooler. Now, when it comes to the characters you want floating in and out of the rotation, I have quite a few options here because every character I have pulled up definitely uh, adds their own little touch to the team. So for example, you have this AGL Darkness Toa, which allows her, you know, she is an extreme class crossover character, so perfectly fine for this team, but she's giving a powerful three key and 40% buff as well to all those main rotations. Dude, imagine her on this rotation where you have so much attack and defense from Lynx, so much support going on, as well as, sorry, the, the support for her. Like, that's, to me, that's just absolutely crazy. And she has, of course, a really powerful ability where if you happen to enter the rotation with 30% HP or less, she's giving a 100% HP recovery, as well as 60% to attack and defense for that once-only buff, which is definitely going to uh, look or prove very, very powerful for your main rotations here. So, of course... She is, I would say, a must-run for this team. Then we have this AGL Metal Golden or Golden Metal Cooler. This character, I'm not going to sit here and say, is the craziest of all time. But the reason why I have him up here is, and again, he's an S he doesn't have an Awakening, right? Uh, but I feel like the 150% defense mixed in with the chance of doing additional super while raising your defense on super while the damage reduction per crossover category ally plus 20 percent damage reduction here like this like he he's no pushover again he's not the craziest character of all time but he can build up to 50 percent damage reduction two supers which is maybe even three if you give him additionals right which is possible or three possible defensive raises on top of 150 percent defense so he could be a decent tank for that slot three depending on of course who you're fighting right but again definitely better than nothing on this list 
Then we have Dark Janemba. When I, I don't really understand why people really consider this guy uh, mega mid. I mean, he's definitely not that at all. High chance the guard is definitely not bad, right? It's again, it's it's, it's solid. It's not good, great, whatever, but it's solid. But if you're facing multiple enemies, it's just guaranteed guard. So it's like, what's the problem, right? If you're running SBR, ESBR, this guy is, you know, the, the GOAT for that. Now, of course, he is an SSR, so his stats are just not the greatest. Even with guarding, he could take a little bit of damage, but it's better to have guard than not to have guard, right? Uh, and then all the buffs that he receives here, the 150% to attack and defense buildup, uh, the extra defensive buildup right here, and the three-turn buff also is going to help his stats look a lot better than if he didn't have that buff. And I feel like the chance to crit is not the craziest of all time, you know? But again, this character can be a decent slot three option, depending on what event you're running and, uh, you know, what the team looks like overall. But, you know, if you have him, consider putting him on the team. Keep in mind that I didn't, I didn't make a best team for these two guys specifically because they're SSRs. So team building around them is pretty difficult because they only they literally only have six you know uh out of seven links it's, it's just it's just tough to build you teams around ssr specifically right anyways you have this robello unit which i actually i feel like robello here is a very interesting slots three character so one reason is her her high chance to dodge which i think is very very powerful right uh, she also has the ability to rainbow orb change, which is definitely going to be really solid for the rest of the team here. Um, an additional 10% defense and recovers 5% HP per rainbow key sphere obtained. And great chance of foreseeing enemies super attack when there's another Dragon Ball Heroes category ally attacking in the same turn. That is a monstrous ability. If you can see super attacks, especially on a rotation like this, you might be able to, you know, plan ahead or, or plan better you know like i i think foreseeing enemy super attacks and you know a great chance unlimited great chance is a very powerful thing so you definitely want to rock her if you can on top of the ability for her to greatly raise her own defense so if you can perform two super attacks you're going to be looking pretty pretty good if you ask me another possible option of course is this awaken supreme kai of time now i'm not gonna lie to you she's not the craziest obviously of all time however in that third slot, she is not bad at all. And the reason why I say that is because she has 100% defense here. 100% defense on super, which is definitely a pretty strong buff. And then massively raises on super. It's, it's another 100%. So imagine again performing two super attacks with her. It's two 100% defensive raises while doing it on her passive while having 100% already. While being on a 200% lead, right? So it's like... She could be a decent defensive option in that last slot. While, of course, right, because this is a two-way unit. Once you're super attacking, you know, uh, the, with, of course, where's the actual super attack stuff here? Okay, yeah. So, when you're super attacking with all of these characters here, right, Sealess by himself can lower defense. Hearts can go ahead and have a chance to, to stun. So, if you activate any of these with the first two slots uh, of the rotation and she's in your third slot, and any of these things are being procced, she's going to do some pretty good damage in that last slot. So her being in that third slot is great for defensive purposes, as well as giving the rest of your rotation a chance to maybe lower the attack, or lower the defense, or seal, or whatever the case is, which gives her a lot of extra power as well. So hopefully that makes sense. And last but not least here, I do have this AGL uh, free-to-play arms, or I don't know how to pronounce his name. Now, this guy, I'm not going to sit here and say is great by any means, but I feel like him raising defense at least on super is good for if you can get an, addition, you know, an additional super attack off. Uh, the extra 150% defense is very, very strong, if you ask me, on top of the 120% here, on top of his two key and 30% defensive buff. So again, he's not going to be the tankiest character of all time, but if you just have no other option, I feel like even though he has, you know, he has free to play stats, right? But I feel like when you factor in 150% defense on top of 100, what well, that's, yeah, 270% defense, an extra 30% from support, high chance of stunning just to help avoid you getting clapped, as well as raising defense for one turn, which could potentially be two, you know, not two turns, but two uh, one turn raises if you can get additional off, I feel like could be or could allow you to have some type of 
a decent de decent defensive liability in that last slot as well. Again, not the craziest option of all time, but when it comes to a team like this, any support will absolutely go crazy. And it's, again, going to allow these rotations to hit just a lot much harder while making sure that you're also good in the last slot as well. So hopefully you uh, enjoyed this video. Let me know if you did. No, sub I completely forgot about the subscriber challenge, but of course, if you want to subscribe, help us get to the amazing goal uh, that is 52,000 subscribers. Consider subscribing, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Take care and peace.